This is SOLIDWORKS Tutorial Lesson 5.2. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about making a part drawing. So let's go ahead and create a new drawing. And we'll choose our title block. We're going to have to browse for it. Because like we talked about in the last lesson, um, we can't save it in the default directory or it won't get updated with the different computers that you'll need to use. So you'll remember where it is that you need to find it. And then we'll hit OK. So this pops up with our title block in the background. And um, remember that there's two layers of the sheet. Right now we're on the drawing layer and not on the sheet format layer. If we wanted to get to the sheet format layer, we could right click. Uh, after we click on this red check over here, we could right click and go edit sheet format. Um, let's actually look at these properties first. So these are the sheet properties. Um, in America, we usually use the third angle projection. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and we'll talk about that later. We can also change the, the sheet scaling, but for now we'll leave it 1 to 1. And then let's click OK. Um, let's go up here to the File Properties button. This is where we tell what auth the author is, or who it is. So I'm going to go ahead and put me. And then let's also give it a title. So let's just say this is part um, 1, and we'll hit OK. So you can see that my property is linked, or this, this text right here is linked to the title of the sheet. So that part one pops up right here. If you have the file name linked, then it would automatically link what you had the file name as. All right, so if we go up here to this model view tool, and we can browse for what part we want to insert into this drawing, um, here are some of the files that we've created. And let's go ahead and pick on this connecting rod and click open. Okay, this brings us to the next menu in our property manager. And let's go ahead and create multiple views. So let's click this button here. And let's have the front view, the top view, and the right view selected. And you can see where they're going to be put in the, the graphics window. We'll go ahead and click the green check mark. So we can see that these views are all gone in there. All right, we can drag these views around, and they're locked to the first view, which is the front view. So this top view is always going to be vertical from it, and this right view is always going to be horizontal from it. Um, if you do right-click on those views, you can change that alignment. You can break that alignment so you can move them around where you want. But in this case, we want to leave them there. This is what's called the third angle projection where we have the front view here, then the top view above it, and then the right view to the right of it. All right. If we wanted to, right now this this is at the scale one, 1 to 2. If we wanted to, we could right click and go back into the properties again and change this to 1 to 1. That makes everything a little bit bigger. So you can drag those around. So I just changed the, the sheet property for the, the scaling. Um, let's say we wanted one to be different. So we can come to the property manager. There's another option here for the scale. Already it's chosen as the use sheet scale, which means that we're using the one to one that we set it as. If we change it to use custom scale, then we can change it to whatever we want, and it'll be different than what the what is set on the sheet. But for now, let's leave it on the sheet scale. We can also choose the display style. Right now it's the hidden lines removed display. We can choose the shaded with edges shaded without edges, or we can have the hidden lines visible, or everything a wireframe. So let's go ahead and pick the hidden lines removed, which is the default, and we'll keep it there. All right, and then let's click the green check to have that be, be done there. All right, the annotation. Let's go ahead and add another note, and we'll name the views. So this one here is the front view. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And I'm going to go ahead and drag one up and do one here. And rename that as the top view. And one more time for this right view over here. Okay. So we've labeled our views. And then we're done doing those notes.
Another thing in the annotation tabs is something called the model items. So we want to insert in all of the dimensions that are from our part file. If we fully defined our sketch, then all those dimensions should be defined and should all come in when we click this button. So we want the source and destination. We want the source to be the entire model. And we'll just leave the rest of the defaults and click the green check. So this should bring in all of the dimensions that are related to this part. And they come in a little bit messy at first. You'll have to kind of move them around to make them where you want them to be. The most logical place for each one of these. And that's really up to you. Usually you don't want dimensions to intersect each other. But you want them to all be visible. So you kind of have to pick the best place for all of them. Let's see. That's almost there. This is a really messy part, so it has a lot of weird dimensions. Let's go ahead and drop that out there for now. It isn't too important at this moment to get that. All right, let's say we want a different type of dimension on there. While we have this one selected, we can go to the property manager for that and we can click a different type of dimension. This one's a diameter type. So then we can click and drag that somewhere else. So that's a little bit better. Or we can do the radius. Let's leave it at the diameter. All right. So let's leave that there for now. Okay, so you can see that all of our dimensions are here. Let's say we want one of these on this view instead of the, the front view. Let's say we want this in here. So if we click and drag on this and hold down the shift button, when we get to another drawing view that it can go to, we can drop it down and we can have that one there instead. So I was just holding shift and moving it along to that new new place. Let's see, I forgot this one here. All right, this is a weird part to dimension, but it's looking pretty good now. All right. So another thing we can do is add a section view. So let's go to View Layout and add a section view. And this says, please sketch a line on a drawing to view to create a section view. So I'm going to draw that line right down the middle of this part here. And it's going to create a section view. And this is also aligned to that front view. I'm going to drop it down here. It's looking like everything's a little bit big right now. Um, we'd probably want a different scale. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll right click again, go to our properties, and make our scale 1 to 2 again. Let's see what that does. Okay. So do you want to scale the annotation's position and the text height? We just want the position scale. So let's go ahead and do that. So it looks a little bit better. We have more room to put things in now. And let's move things around so they're still visible. This might make it even harder to see all of these dimensions. Um, one of the things that we can do also is a detail view. Let's say over here there's a lot of dimensions that match up with that part. So let's create a detail view. And this is going to sketch a circle around the part that we want to do a detail view on. So let's go ahead and make this here a detail view. And let's drop it out here. So this section is section AA and you can see a line right here that has A's on it and arrows to show where we're cutting it and then where we're looking after we've cut it. So you can kind of see that here. For this detail view, you can see a circle with a B in it. And then this is detail B, and it has a scale. And this has the scale right underneath. It's different than the sheet scale. And so it can be labeled here. And let's go ahead and drag some of these dimensions over. So I'm just going to hold the shift and hopefully bring those over here where we can read them better. So detail views kind of unclutter our bigger view and make it easier to read. Actually, you don't want to bring that one over there because it's not visible. 
you know, we could even have two detail views if we wanted to. And that was linking up both of those dimensions. Let's see. Move that one back into place. Let's see what else we want to bring over. Let's bring over this as well. And position it where we want it. One of the cool things is when you click on this little button here, you can change the direction of that arrow. So you can either have it going from the inside or the outside. So depending on what you want, you can move those leaders around and make different kinds. A lot of different options you can do on the drawings. So you can just try clicking on those different things and seeing what they do. All right, so that kind of cleans it up a little bit. Still kind of messy. But if you want, you can play around with it until it's good. You can either you can even add another detail view for this other side. Oh, that's a big circle. Let's go ahead and move that in over the, the middle there. And then this is another detail view. We're running out of space again. There's not a lot of room to put all this stuff, but we'll want to drag things around until we we get enough room. This is going to be a messy sketch because we're just kind of looking at things. In the final drawing, you want to make sure everything is clean and, and good. All right, let's go ahead and bring these over as well. So that's the part drawing. So part drawings, we don't want any redundant dimensions on there. So we're just going to have the stuff that the model items brings in. Your TA will be checking for dimensions that are gray. So you don't want to go into the annotation and add a smart dimension to something, let's say this, if we didn't have it in our, our sketch. Um, you can see that this is a driven dimension and not a driving one. That means that if you click on this, you can't modify it because it's driven. So it doesn't let you modify it. However, for these other dimensions, let's say this, we can double click it and it lets us modify it. So let's change it to 1.6 instead. That makes everything show that it needs to be updated. So we can click on this rebuild button. It'll update our part. I made it a little bit bigger everywhere where it needed to and it actually went back to the part file and updated it there too. So when we save this it will go ahead and save the part drawing change as well. So let's go ahead and undo that because we don't want that that change to our part. Let's see control Z isn't working so let's go ahead and just change that back. So 1.5 and rebuild. So that's pretty much the things that you need to know about the part drawing. You'll have your title block here and your part. You'll have the third angle projection with the front view, top view, and right view. Maybe a section view if it's needed. And then one or two detail views depending on what you need there. Okay, there's another type of thing that we can add. We want to add, oh, went to the wrong one. So view layout and model view. If we go to our part here, we can click on the isometric view right here to add that. Not a lot of room. You don't want it to be this busy on your drawing. Um, but we're just looking at the different things. So you can add an isometric view and have the, the shaded feature on there to kind of show what the final part looks like in the isometric view. Um, let's say you have an object that is the same in the front view and the top view. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and get out of this drawing. We won't save our SOLIDWORKS drawing part or the part file. But let's create a new drawing. Because we're in a hurry, let's just use this landscape and not the to display the sheet format. So we're not using our title block. And we're going to browse for the file. Let's use this file right here, the stepped shaft, and insert it in. Let's do the multiple views and the front, the top, and the right. So they're all 
backwards on this one. And they're backwards because it's showing us the first angle projection, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and pick the front, the top, and the right again. And then we'll see what happens. So they're in there right now. And if we right click and do the properties, let's change it to the third angle projection. And if we were to do that again, now they're in the right, right views. So let's actually X out of this, select what we have there, delete them. We want a yes to all. We'll go ahead and insert it in the right angle projection. Have to browse for our file again. And let's do create multiple views, and we'll click all of these, and we'll throw in the isometric view as well. And the green check. All right. So we can see that the front view and the top view are exactly the same, because it's a shaft, and you spin it, and you see the same thing. This is called a redundant view. And we don't need this top view, because it's already shown in the front view. So we can have a third angle projection without that. And just make sure to label this the front view and the right view. So that's something else. A lot of the, the things that you'll be drawing today in the lab, or this week in the lab, will be this kind of thing where one of the views is redundant and you don't need it in there. So that's what you need to know about part drawings.